Diane Williams here coming from I and I Studio. It's a beautiful afternoon and I have quite a few things going on in the studio today. Um, as I come into the studio each day, I go through kind of an inventory of what needs to be done and what I want to do. We all want to paint. And sometimes uh, painting means painting out the sides, wiring the back, um, putting varnish or cold wax on the surface. So um, these things are necessary. And I've mentioned to you before, if the paintings are completed uh, and someone asks you if you can step in for a show because someone else wasn't ready, <laughs> then you're ready. Can't tell you how often that ha has happened to me. It's been wonderful. So what I'd like you to do is stay tuned till the end of the video. I'm going to do a little demonstration at the end. But first, I want to talk to you about seeing art, okay? The ability to see a painting, your painting, and other paintings when you go into galleries or museums, it's really important, and I believe I've told you the story that years ago, when I was just coming up in the art world, I went to a museum with two artist friends of mine that were way more advanced than I was, and they were conversing about the art they were seeing in the museum, and I knew they were seeing something different than I was, even though we're standing in front of the same painting. The way they're viewing it is different than the way that I was able to view it. And way back then I said, I want to be able to see artwork. I can also remember going on a field trip to uh, the Yerba, Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco with a teacher of mine. And the work was very hard for me as a young student to understand. And of course, I was too shy to speak up. You know, I just, I still wonder to this day, what is it that I saw that was so confusing to me? And how might I view it different today if I were to go back and take in that same show? Because artism is very subjective. It's very personal. However, I think there are some guidelines that we can learn to help us see art. We're going to discuss that today by looking at uh, these two, these two paintings, um, one of which I believe is close to done and the other one that's a hot mess. Let me tell you why. All right, so I, these are two paintings that I worked into. I had uh, some other paintings under them to begin with um, and they hung on my wall for several weeks and you know they just didn't, ring my chimes after a couple of weeks, if you know what I mean. They were nice. At first, I was afraid to work into them because they were interesting enough. But after hanging them up on the wall for a couple of weeks, I knew, you know, if I was walking by a gallery, this wouldn't pull me in the door. So what is it that needs to be remedied? How do I fix it? And um, I went into the work with some collage paper, uh, some house paint, some stencil, some quieting down the areas, uh, some covering up the areas uh, with paper, painting over it, sanding back through it. Um, there's a lot of methods that I use to get to where I want to go. And I feel that this is a, a, a pretty strong painting, and I feel that one's a really in a, an awkward stage. So what happened to this was it was in a pretty exciting stage that I enjoyed. It had a lot of open space. I had put uh, some red and pink parasol stencils in and I decided to work back into it, continuing this glue over here, uh, deepening the stencils with a darker color, uh, adding some collage, and before I knew it, I had a piece that was way too busy. 
Um, so what I want to do is I want to work into that with you this afternoon and see if we can bring it up a notch. Um, you never anticipate that when you work into a painting, you're going to solve it. It's just another step in the process. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to quiet it down. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do a pour of house paint over the top of this. I'm going to then do some scraping. After that dries, um, which will probably be the subject of another video because it in this human weather will take a good couple of days, then I would sand into it and reevaluate it. You know, how does it look with the, with the quiet space and the sanding into it? Um, isn't that where I started? It sort of is. That's kind of where I liked it to begin with. And maybe I should have left well enough alone, but screwing up a painting always gives us the opportunity to venture a little bit deeper than we were before. And I want to do that today. I also want to mention, as far as learning to see, I think the best way to learn that is through critique. Not only by having people critique your work, but by participating in critiques of other people's work. It's nice to be in a small group because then you get the opinions of your peers, how they view art. It can be very different than how I view art. So I may start a critique with an opinion about a painting and then hearing other people talk about the painting can broaden my opinion. And I'm not going to say change my opinion. It broadens it. When my opinion is broader, I may change my opinion, adjust my opinion. The opinion will uh, be different. It, it's a benefit to have critique. I do critique groups on Zoom, and uh, they're five weeks. Um, the ideal number of students is four to eight, and we present our work. If it's four, we can present it every single week. If it's eight, every other week. And the group online on Zoom talks about the painting. Um, I project the painting onto the screen, and we are able to talk and critique the painting. It's very beneficial. We have a group starting February 15th. Um, doesn't matter what country you're in. The time zone may matter. Uh, mine start at 11 a.m. Pacific time in the United States. I would love it if you join the group. And um, the link uh, is um, going to be posted for you so that you can can join us for that. So are you ready for my demo? Let's go. People often ask me about house paint, why I like house paint. And the reason, one of the reasons I like it is that um, you can pour it onto the surface and scrape at it. Uh, I used to do this with gesso but gesso is thicker and uh, the color is limited. If I want uh, a different color gesso, I'm most likely going to tint the gesso with a, another color. With house paint, I can go and choose a color sample and have it custom mixed to the color I want. Um, and then when I pour it and scrape it, I can cover a huge amount of space. It also has a viscosity that's fairly thin. So if I scrape over an area, the texture underneath the area pops up. Uh, I can scrape through, revealing some patterns. There's a lot of reasons why I use house paint and when I use house paint. Certainly, I don't use house paint for the whole painting. Um, areas like uh, these yellow up here, I wanted to give them volume, so I, I took a glaze of acrylic paint and I painted into it to create almost what I think of as kind of little stones or little rocks. So 
what I do is I sort of get an idea about where I might want to go with the painting, what I might want to cover up, and what I, I certainly want to preserve. Um, many people get frustrated when the painting gets to this point and they cover the whole thing up. That's not necessary. There's a lot of good paint on here that eventually is going to contribute to a beautiful piece. Um, I have to arrange all the elements so that they come together harmoniously and work. I never know exactly what's going to happen, uh, but I do have some idea. This area up here, I want to preserve. And the tops of these parasols, I, I think these are working beautifully. Um, I most likely will keep some of this, but I don't mind covering it up entirely uh, if that happens and then reintroducing it later or not. Now this area I think is really interesting. It, it's not precious. It's not that I can't cover it up. What I like about it is it reminds me of a stone. And remember I said these reminded me of stones. So I start thinking, what about a composition that was stones and parasols? How might that work? I don't know. It's just a hint that the painting is giving me. I'm listening to the painting. So um, for this, you're going to need your house paint. I use my putty knife, a four inch scraper. I have a bucket of water, thing of paper towels. That's all I need at this point. So let's give it a go, see what happens. I'm going to go in this area. Now you don't want a huge amount of paint and you can always add more. Let's start with that. Um, the color is important too. I had yellow as a background. Uh, then I used a off-white that blended with a, a yellow that had not dried and I got kind of a gold color. I thought it needed something to link it back up here with this white. So I've chosen a lighter color. Okay. I want to get this area covered up. It's very bumpy uh, where I collaged some thin rice paper. And when I sand back into that, it should be quite interesting. Okay. I don't like what I did over here with this blue, get rid of that. You know, I wanted to keep some of this green over here. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, it's a piece of collage that I found. Notice when I scrape uh, over the top of the parasol, I'm getting an impression of the parasol from below. My question now to myself, see I get some beautiful blue coming through too, I love that. And the question I'm posing to myself is, do I want to come all the way over here with the white uh, or not? And I think at this moment I'm going to stop. Um, less is more, I can always come back and add more. So for now, I'm going to call it quits. It's as easy as that. And um, half the battle is just seeing the potential, seeing where the painting might go, knowing that I can't solve the whole painting right now, but this is a step in the right direction. I'm going to show you a fun hack uh, with house paint. House paint, it's crusty on the rim. And uh, no matter how 
diligent I am about wiping the rim seems to build up. And I get forgetful, I get excited, I'm painting, I throw it off to the side, it gets dry and crusty. So what I have learned, I can't, I can't really get a tight fit on that lid. You can see it's kind of standing up. What I've learned about these little cans is I can take the gloves I was using. I stretch the gloves over the top of the can. This just works so well, it's crazy. So that's my glove stretched over the top of the can, keeps it airtight, and that's what I do, my little cheat. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed yourself and learned something. Um, please be sure and check out my website for my workshops. There's a lot of information in there. Um, we're planning for the summer some of the destinations that Chuck and I may be this summer. Uh, not all of them are up yet uh, as we're uh, kind of finishing some of the details with the venues that we're going to um, be doing, offering workshops at. So check the website often. Please join us. I'd love to meet you and paint with you. In the meantime, do your own thing. Have a good time. Go to your studio. Painting is a practice. It sure doesn't come uh, without the practice, and practice does make perfect. Take some time, be patient with yourself, and know you're going to get beautiful paintings all along the way, and they just get better and better. Okay? Take care. Bye.